Welcome to Okaloosa Eye on Crime, where local law enforcement gives you a chance to help find active uh, fugitives that are on the run. That's right, and we're also going to profile um, an armed burglary and aggravated battery suspect, as well as show you some top-notch video of a shoplifter in action. And we're also going to talk about a 2015 murder case that the Fort Walton Beach Police Department is still hoping somebody has some information about. So let's take a look and go right into it. First one is the Okaloosa County Sheriff's Office is trying to identify a man referenced some credit card fraud. Now back on August 29th, the victim reported a lost wallet in Walton County, possibly at the Winn-Dixie there in Miramar Beach. Included in the wallet were a debit card and a credit card. The cards were fraudulently, fraudulently used on the same day at Target, Walgreens, and Walmart in Destin by the black male that you see pictured here. He was driving what appeared to be a white Cadillac CTS. Anyone with information about his identity, give us a call. Remember, it could be 100% anonymous. We don't have any pictures on this one, but on Saturday, July 14th, an unidentified suspect broke into Pond Plus 2, and that's at 512 9th Street in Defuniac Springs. It took place around 3.30 in the morning, and the suspect essentially used a hammer, busted the glass door, the, and gained entry into the building. Then he went directly to the jewelry case and started busting that glass, taking out numerous pieces of jewelry worth thousands of dollars, then fled the business. And Walton County Sheriff's Office is seeking information on a suspect following an armed burglary of an occupied dwelling and aggravated battery that occurred in Freeport uh, on the morning of October 16th. At about 6.30, deputies were called to an armed burglary uh, and aggravated assault at the 14,000 block of 331 Business there in Freeport. Now, the victim stated a man came inside her home, threatened her and her son with a weapon. The suspect initially fled on foot, but is believed to be traveling in the area in a beat-up, older model sedan, possibly a Toyota gold or silver in color with gold or silver spray paint covering the dents on the vehicle. Now the back windshield was busted out and is covered with some kind of uh, unknown material. Described as a white male, uh, brown hair, standing about six foot tall. He was wearing a camouflage jacket, blue jeans and tan shoes. Uh, he had black tattoos covering his arms, hands and chest. And he also had a surgical scar stretching from his sternum just below his belly button uh, with fresh staples which actually he had shown the suspect and investigators say actually the day prior to this incident uh, on the 15th the same individual assisted the victim by changing her flat tire on the side of the road uh, headed the south side area of business 331 right before the high school about 5 p.m. he showed her his stomach and that's where she knew that the the surgery said he had he had surgery um, after a motorcycle accident. Now, the victim said a man in a white business truck also stopped by to offer assistance and may have some information about the suspect as well. So anyone with information about that, give Emerald Coast Crime Stoppers a call. And that's a kind of scary, scary. thing about a, a good Samaritan, or at least you think they are, and they turn out not mm -hmm. to be so good. Uh, next up, the Fort Walton Beach Police Department has an active murder case from 2015 they're still hoping to solve. On Thursday, October 1st, around 2 p.m. on the 15th, or I'm sorry, on October 1st on 2015, the PD responded to a shots fired call in the area of 3rd Street and Carson Drive. When they arrived on the scene, they found 20-year-old Jeppe, is it Jeppe? I think it is Jeppe. Jeppe Cortez Samuel had been shot multiple times and he later died at the hospital. The shooter fled in a dark-colored Hyundai four-door vehicle with dark tinted windows. Anybody with any information about this case, please call Emerald Coast Crime Stoppers anonymously at 850-863-TIPS. You can submit an anonymous web tip at emeraldcoastcrimestoppers.com. And of course, you can also submit your tip via the P3 mobile tips application. Now keep in mind, you can uh, remain anonymous as we like to stress, and there is a reward of up to $3,000 offered for information leading to an arrest in this case. And you just don't get much better video than this. I know we complain a lot that sometimes the video is not the best quality, but take a look at this video. This is actually a pretty brazen shoplifter that the Oakland County Sheriff's Office is trying to ID back on October 8th. Uh, the black female that you see in this video, she stole about $850 worth of merchandise from Sephora, uh, located there in Destin Commons. And you can just see she kept placing items in her purse or the Victoria's, Victoria's Secret bag she was carrying. She did have a star tattoo on her right shoulder and possibly some additional tattoos on her back. But great video. If you recognize her, again, contact the Sheriff's Office or, of course, Emerald Coast Crime Stop. And she apparently figures out pretty quick that they're on to her. Yes. And, and makes her exit. Takes but, off. But not before she uh, stuffed her purse with some stolen items. Next up, Walton County Sheriff's Office is searching for a trio of car burglars. On Thursday, September 20th, at around 11.40 p.m., three suspects committed five vehicle burglaries in the area of Dune Allen off County Highway 30A. 
Four of the burglaries were on Trade Winds Drive and one on Seamist Lane, and the thieves took wallets, sunglasses, and cash. Unfortunately, uh, here's the recurring theme that we talk about all the time, all the vehicles were unlocked. And I don't think we can stress that enough. We see it day and you know day after day after day, lock your vehicles lock. and secure your belongings. Right, and don't leave anything in plain view that they could see that they'd want, because typically they won't bust a window unless they see your laptop or your phone sitting right there in, in, in purse or wallet in right. open view. Uh, next up, thanks to work by the Okaloosa County Legislative Delegation and Okaloosa County Commissioners, four fallen sheriff's deputies have been honored for their sacrifice with local road and bridge designations. That's right, and a special road de designation sign unveiling ceremony took place in September with family members on hand as special guests. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I want to thank first uh, the family for being here and the sacrifices you've made for our community. I want to uh, just let you know from, from the bottom of my heart and for the men and women of the Sheriff's <laughs> Office and for the community that uh, we love you and that you'll always be family. Uh, that's a bond that can't be broken. It won't be broken. I want our family members here and the Sheriff and all the troops here to know uh, who was in on the ground floor and who helped craft the idea of this. And one of our own retired uh, managers here at the Sheriff's Department called me up, and I want the families to know who that was. Uh, retired Captain Henry Garrett, Hank, would you stand? And I, he's going to be mad at me because he didn't want me to even do this. <laughs> so I'm going to read Resolution 1847. A resolution of the Okaloosa Board of County Commissioners recognizing the supreme sacrifices made by the late Okaloosa County Sheriff's Department deputies Anthony Forgione, Skip York, Bert Lopez, and Bill Myers, who were all killed in the line of duty, requesting the Florida legislature to honor these fallen heroes by making memorial road and bridge designations in Florida law and offering support during the legislative process. And whereas these courageous and dedicated public servants gave their all in the protection of our citizens of Okaloosa County and deserve some meaningful memorial designations that will be seen every day, always reminding our citizens and visitors of the dangers and sacrifices made by law enforcement officers and their families. The Board of County Commissioner of Okaloosa County do hereby request the Florida Senate and the Florida House of Representatives to designate the Shalimar Bridge on Highway 85 South as the deputies Tony Forgione and Bill Myers Memorial Bridge and the portion of U.S. Highway 90 East in Okaloosa County from the Show River Bridge to the Walton County Line as Deputy Skip York and Burt Lopez Memorial Highway. We got buy-in unanimously from representatives across the state who also should be thanked for honoring um, your family members as well. This is the legacy and the life left behind by four individuals that served, as Mr. Williamson said, their nation, their county, and their community, but above all, their family, exceptionally well. One, two, three. First of all, I just want to thank um, all the representatives of the legislation that made today happen. Um, for um, for Gioni family, Lopez, York, and Myers, this means so much to us that so often when I've communicated with other spouses that have lost a police officer, they feel very forgotten in their community. And this is nationwide, but I can honestly say that in Okaloosa, um, have always continued to honor our men, and we are very thankful for that. We're very uh, grateful for today and we're humbled by the generosity of all the work that went into this so we we thank you from the bottom of our hearts Now, State Representative Mel Ponder sponsored the designation for Deputies Forgione and Myers, and State Representative Williamson sponsored for Deputies Lopez and York. We want to thank everyone involved for all those efforts, and I have to say, you know, coming across the bridge, driving down the road, 
you always notice those signs and it's a constant sure memory uh, or reminder of their sacrifice. Uh, next up on the show, we want to run down our first list of people that are wanted by local law enforcement. If you have any information on their whereabouts and it leads to a, an arrest, remember you can get a cash reward of up to $3,000 and you never have to give your name. And first up on our list is going to be a new face to the show and that is Phoenix Wendell Jordan. He's 19 years old. Uh, he's wanted for robbery with a deadly weapon and burglary, last known to live over in Fort Walton Beach. The Walton County Sheriff's Office would like to find Ashley Lynn Peacock. Uh, she's wanted for burglary and grand theft. Her last known address was in Vernon. 26-year-old Tanner J. Lewis is wanted for violation of probation for fleeing and eluding law enforcement and possession of a controlled substance, last known to live in Niceville. Next up, another female, Tamothy LaCole Hankins. She's wanted for insurance fraud, uttering a forged instrument, and grand theft. Hankins' last known address was in Laurel Hill. And deputies are still searching for Clayton McCree Copeland, who was last known to live in Destin. He's wanted for violation of probation for providing false information to a pawnbroker and grand theft of a motor vehicle. Another grand theft of a motor, motor vehicle, Craig Mitchell Mayfield, a 54-year-old white male, last known to live on Troy Street in Fort Walton Beach. And Walton County Sheriff's deputies are searching for 27-year-old Daryl LaShawn Williams for lewd and lascivious behavior. Coretta LaDawn James is wanted for failure to appear for grand theft and fraud. Her last known address was Wilson Street in Crestview. And James Dexter Jackson is still being sought by the Walton County Sheriff's Office for burglary, grand theft, and grand theft of a motor vehicle, last known to live in Freeport. Give Emerald Coast Crime Stoppers a call if you know where to find Devin Earl Jordan. Jordan's won by the Walton County Sheriff's Office for felony violations of probation. And some good news this month. We can remove Kaylin Elizabeth Mitchell. She has been located. Not so for Roy Nelson Halland. He's wanted for VOP on a charge of possession of methamphetamine. His last known address was Harry Adams Road in Holt. And yet another one that's been captured, and that would be Ronnie Eugene Coley. Coming up on another uh, female in Jolie, Rochelle Johnson. She's wanted for aggravated battery. Her last known address was Mixon Road in Defuniac Springs. Reginald Dwayne Muse, who's 25 years old, he's wanted for violation of probation for grand theft, burglary, and aggravated stalking. We'd love to see somebody call in the whereabouts of Chad Alford. He's wanted over in Walton County for aggravated assault and causing the cruel death, pain, or suffering to an animal. His last known address, Powell Drive in Niceville. Dennis Frederick Taylor Jr. is wanted for failure to appear for a charge of fraud, providing false statements to obtain unemployment compensation. 40-year-old William Brian Harnish is still being sought for violation of probation for possession of a controlled substance and possession of drug paraphernalia, last known to live in Freeport. Oh, here's one we can cross off the list now. Leanne Summer Lawson has been located since the last show. But we're still looking for 31-year-old Lucas Lorenzo William. He's wanted for armed robbery, and this was uh, from an armed robbery that actually occurred back in October of 2016. So he's been on the run for a while. Yeah. Timothy James Howard's wanted for larceny, resisting an officer in recovery of stolen property, and failure to appear fraud. Last known address, Bearhead Road in Defuniac Springs. And last on our first list is 37-year-old Edward Lamont Fountain. He's wanted for failure to appear for carrying a concealed weapon, uh, possession of a weapon or ammo by a convicted felon, possession of a controlled substance and narcotics equipment, and last but not least, driving while licensed, suspended, or revoked. Now, Hurricane Michael created stress and fear as it moved through the Gulf and left devastation and suffering in its path. But, you know, the spirit of the Emerald Coast was on full display because you saw individuals, organizations, schools, law enforcement agencies, of course, businesses, nonprofits, all kinds of public safety groups actually all across the region rushing to help their neighbors. As Hurricane Michael approached, the Okaloosa County Sheriff's Office and other local law enforcement kept tabs on our communities. The OCSO used social media as dozens of deputies sent in photos and video of what was happening in our area to keep people up to speed. The immediate cleanup efforts were also on display, and then regional recovery recovery efforts once it became clear our area had been spared. And 11 volunteers from the Okaloosa County Sheriff's Office loaded up for a 10 to 14 day deployment, packing up a fuel tanker, generators, chainsaw and more. Now they headed over to Gulf County initially and then ultimately moved to help in Bay and Washington counties.
Captain David Allen says the OCSO volunteers are self-sufficient while on site, and that's a big deal, actually. They have worked directing traffic on burglary suppression and wherever needed to help protect people and property. Additional deputies and Okaloosa jail staff volunteered to help at the Bay County Jail as well, and that jail was in dire need of extra helping hands. Now, the efforts to support our fellow Emerald Coast neighbors will continue for weeks and months to come because, uh, as we all know, the work yes. to recover and rebuild is certainly not going to be over anytime soon. That's right, and thanks to everyone in the community who has pitched in, you know, donated, volunteered, and given their support to this effort. Now let's move to our next list of fugitives. Of this, uh, this is as of today's taping date of October 18th. And first up on this list is Felipe Carrera Gonzalez Sr. He's 59 years old. He's wanted for failure to appear for Battery, last known to live on Earl Street over in Fort Walton Beach. Seamus Mason Cotner Marshall, wanted for violation of probation for Battery as well as fraud, last known address Mary Esther. Okaloosa deputies are still searching for George Monroe Emmerich II, and he's wanted for violation of probation for domestic violence strangulation and aggravated battery. And he's been on the list for quite a while. Yes. So has Alexis Wilmer Mondragon, wanted by the OCSO for sexual battery, sexual offenses against a child, and lewd and lascivious um, molestation. Obviously, anybody with information on that individual, we would love to, to get a tip on the location. 36-year-old Teresa Jean Gore. She was last known to live on Lloyd Street in Fort Walton Beach. She's wanted for child neglect and violation of probation for driving while license suspended or revoked and possession of a controlled substance. Moving to Walton County, Brittany Linnell Sanders is wanted, by, is wanted by the Sheriff's Office there for VOP on creating, using, or possessing counterfeit credit cards with intent to use. And Joshua James Picard is also wanted by the Walton County Sheriff's Office for violation of probation for possession with intent to sell, manufacture, or deliver a controlled substance, possession of marijuana, and possession of paraphernalia. And you know, when we go down these lists, it shows you how many people there are that have active warrants. This is just a... <laughs> A, a sample. Just a fraction. This one's been on the, on here for a while. Roderick James Rudderson Jr. wanted for possession of synthetic narcotics within 1,000 feet of a school and failure to appear for driving with a license suspended or revoked. But deputies are no longer looking for Leonard Allen Jr. He has been captured. Rebecca Nicole Taylor's up next. She's wanted for VOP on an original charge of possession of a controlled substance. Samuel Edward Thomas III is 30 years old. He's wanted for violation of probation on the original charges of providing false information to a pawnbroker false imprisonment and grand theft, last known to live in Shalimar. James Anthony Williams has warrants in Walton County for violating probation on possession of a controlled substance, possession of marijuana, and possession of drug paraphernalia. And deputies are still searching for Andrea Jo Myers, or Joy Myers that is, wanted for violation of probation for theft, last known to live on Gibson Road in Fort Walton Beach. Law enforcement's trying to track down Tashawn Coward Sr., wanted for driving with a license suspended or revoked, and non-payment of child support. Last known address was on Scranton Street in Fort Walton Beach. And we don't have a photo of this individual, but he's been on the show for a while. We'd love to get him in custody. And that's 53-year-old Jeffrey Nelson Grimes. He's wanted for possession of a photog photograph of sexual performance of a child last known to live in Destin. And now stepping back again to Hurricane Michael, one of the big focuses of law enforcement dur the, during this period is to try to prevent scammers from taking advantage of people. A local woman's already reported getting a call from someone claiming to be from FEMA and they asked for her bank account number and her bank routing number because they were going to help her make a donation. Luckily she didn't uh, fall for that, but we just want to send out a reminder to everyone that you're dealing, uh, make sure you're dealing with legitimate charitable operations. Be wary of GoFundMe accounts without yes. doing your homework. Homework. Yeah, and it's best to go directly to the website uh, of recognized charities and aid organizations as opposed to following links that are actually provided in emails. Now, your Better Business Bureau at BBB.org, uh, along with Give.org and CharityNavigator.org are good starting spots. You know, law enforcement's always looking to solve cold cases. Sometimes those cold cases can actually be like a thorn in their sides. And this one that we're about to show you has been a mystery for way too long. This jewelry that's been stored in an evidence folder at the Okaloosa County Sheriff's Office since 1994 is some of the few clues left attesting to a life, a life of a woman who investigators believe died violently, although the exact manner of death is undetermined. There's also the flowered print dress with a matching short jacket shown in these photos that she'd been wearing. 
Okaloosa Sheriff's Investigator Travis Robinson says the woman's badly decomposed remains were found September 15, 1994. That was off Interstate 10 near Exit 11 in Holt. The remains were found by a work crew. Uh, I believe it was a, pri a prison work crew. And uh, the, according to the report, the medical examiner's report, they estimated it was probably there uh, approximately 12 weeks, three months. We believe she was uh, picked up at a truck stop in the Tampa area. And uh, uh, from what we understand, she was supposed, supposedly to be en route to the Reno, Nevada or Lake Tahoe area. Uh, she, and uh, there is some indication that she may have had some residence in Miami, uh, but we haven't been able to verify that at all. In fact, all these years later, her identity remains a total mystery. In 2007, an artist made these fresh sketches of what she's believed to have looked like. She's estimated to be somewhere between late 20s to early 30s, approximately 5 foot 4 inches tall and somewhere in the area of 110 to 120 pounds. Her hair color was uh, appears to be a dark brown or maybe auburn uh, color and with either blonde roots or blonde streaks in her hair. Clay modeling had been done in the past, developed from the victim's skull, but the distinctive jewelry may be the items that could spark someone's memory. If somebody knew her and knew her well, then you know they may know that she was wearing those, that type of jewelry all the time, uh, that she wore those rings all the time or whatever, um, and hopefully we'll be able to identify her that way. So at this point, the best hope of cold case investigators is to have as many people as possible take a look at the jewelry and the artist's sketches. Robinson's trying to get these images publicized nationwide, but especially in the South Florida area. The goal is to get that one phone call that will allow investigators to identify this victim and bring closure to any surviving family. If you have any information, contact the Okaloosa County Sheriff's Office at 850-651-7400 or your local Crime Stoppers agency. Now a national company recently saw the video we're about to show you on the Okaloosa County Sheriff's Office YouTube channel and is planning to bring this great lady some national recognition. We're, we're going to keep you posted on when that show will air, but here's a look at the short version of a rescue on Choctahatchee Bay by Marine Unit Deputy Robert Wagner this past summer. It started a bit scary for those involved, but it actually ended uh, with humor and a lot of gratitude. I'm 258 north of Crab Island. Uh, we run all over two people in the water. Movies. That is, oh, I know. You're good. And now I'm never coming back here. Okay. Oh, cool. Okay. I'm coming back, but I ain't getting in those damn seats. <laughs> oh, good God. Would you like a water? No. no I just want to land. It's fresh okay. water. But it wasn't like she was popping hoopies or nothing. Yes, ma'am. She ma just turned, and she turned too sharp, I guess, and it capsized. We went under the boat flip back. What's it called? The chopper watching? Chocktahatchee. The day you nearly killed me back in the Chocktahatchee Bridge. Under the Chocktahatchee Bridge. That man, he's always worried about his boat. Thank you. What's your name, sir? Robert Wagner. Robert. Bless you. Huh. Don't ever run a boat to the hood again. Thank you. Oh. Bless you. Thank you. <laughs> you, have you guys a, are awesome. You have a better trip. Thank you, darling. Bless you. <laughs> Not a problem. Thank you. Thank you. So again, this lady's going to be going national because she's got such a great personality Absolutely. and it was a good rescue as well. And that's going to bring us to our final list of fugitives too that we're hoping you can help Emerald Coast Crime Stoppers locate. And remember now you have multiple options and many secure ways to contact us. And of course that's the 24-hour hotline, 863-TIPS, 24 hours on the website, emeraldcoastcrimestoppers.com, or 24 hours you can submit mobile tips at the P3 Mobile Tips app, all 100% anonymous. 
First up is a familiar face, Ricky Joe Hawkins Jr. He's 43. He's wanted for violation of probation for improper exhibition of a weapon, last, un last known to live on Northwest Racetrack Road in Fort Walton Beach. The Walton County Sheriff's Office is looking for Bobby Derone Simmons for felony violation of probation, last known to live on Wetzel Road in Sampson. Walton deputies are also searching for Herbert Samuel Duger, or Duggar, uh, 29 years old. He's wanted for felony violation of probation. David Russell Aleveris, wanted for VOP for burglary and grand theft. And Fort Walton Beach Police are searching for Troy Don Deramus. He's 51 years old and he's wanted for burglary. LaQuentin Rashawn Mitchells, wanted for heroin distribution, last known address in Milligan. And last on the list is Elaine Marie Miller. She's wanted for violation of probation for possession of methamphetamine and she was last known to live in Holt. You know, Hurricane Michael has had such a powerful impact on our area, so we'd be remiss if we didn't go back and just kind of take a look at what has happened to our region and remember our neighbors and keep the help coming. And some of these heartbreaking images are brought to us thanks to uh, R.J. Murdoch with Emerald Coast TV.